Hi everyone, this is your video answer key for the graphing with intercepts practice. So we're going to go through each problem and you're going to see there's kind of a common pattern as we go through most of these, all right? So we're going to start with number one where we need to find both x-intercepts and y-intercepts and then graph. So for the x-intercepts, once again, as we saw from our video lesson, we're going to plug in zero for y every single time. So we're going to put a zero there. And by solving that, that's all going to go away because 2 times 0 is 0. You're left with 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. Therefore, x has to equal 2. So our first intercept is, let's make that a 2, 2 comma 0. All right. Then next for y-intercept, we're going to do the same thing except we're going to plug in now 0 for x. So it's going to be 3 times blank minus 2y equals 6. I'll bring in that red 0 in there just to emphasize the importance of that substitution. So you're left with negative 2y equals 6. Divide both sides by negative 2. That's going to give us negative 3. So the other point is going to be 0, comma, negative 3. So we're going to plot both of these points. 2, comma, 0 means you're going to go 2 on the x-axis and 0 on the y. And 0, negative 3, 0 on the x-axis, down 3 on the y-axis. Two points make a line. So we can connect those two points, draw our arrow to show it goes on forever. And we have our first answer for number 1. Let's move on to number two. So again, x-intercept, we're going to do 2x plus blank equals negative 4. Once again, that blank every single time is going to be a 0. We're going to plug in 0 for the other variable. That goes away. Divide by 2. Therefore, my first point that I'll be plotting in a moment, negative 2, 0. Here's y-intercept. 0 for x. Boom. Gone. And this time, y is just equal to negative 4. There's nothing I have to divide to get y by itself. Therefore, this is 0, comma, negative 4. Let's plot both of these points. Negative 2, comma, 0. We're going to go 2 left on the x-axis. And for the y-axis, we're going to go down 4. Two points. Connect the dots. We've got ourselves a graph. This is the most efficient way if you're given something in standard form, if they just say graph it. It might be quicker to just do this intercept method than to put it into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form does work, and we talked about it in the previous section, but I really do think this might be the best way to go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop using the red, just so you can see. So it's uh, x minus 0 equals negative 1. That goes away. So we just had x equals negative 1. Okay. Okay y-intercept, we're going to have x minus 0 equals negative 1 here. Again, that 0 really just goes away. So there's our, oh, I wrote it wrong. That should be 0, negative 1. Remember, I plugged 0 in for y. Oh, I did it wrong. Hold on. Live here. I'm not editing this. y-intercept, you got to plug in 0 for x. 0 for x, not y. Okay, this actually makes a difference. you got to be careful with this. The zero goes away, that negative sign still stays there. So negative one, negative y equals negative one. You gotta divide both sides by negative one. Okay, now we're in business. Always gotta double check that work, okay? Negative one comma zero is my first point, and then zero comma one is my second point. Here's my line. Okay. So you gotta sometimes be careful with these. Sometimes these ones that look simpler actually sometimes can be more difficult. You gotta be careful with. So x intercept, we plug in. 0 for y, okay? So x is just equal to negative 1. And then in the y-intercept situation, we're going to make 0 plus y equals negative 1. Now, unlike the last question where the y had a negative in front of it, this has a, it's just positive, so we don't have to actually do anything with it. So this first point is negative 1 comma 0, and the second point is 0 comma negative 1. So if we plot those two points here and here, there's our line. Okay, two more to go. Two more to go here in the video answer key. Let's go to number five now. So uh, start with our x-intercept. I always like to start with the x-intercept. I don't know why, just x comes before y in the alphabet. x plus two times zero equals negative four. That goes away. So x is just simply equal to negative four. So once you do enough of these, it really starts to become kind of repetitive and I'm kind of, you know, at this point of the worksheet, you're probably starting to feel that, especially if this is making sense for you. 
And that should be a good thing because what that's telling you is that now if you're presented with this situation on a test, a keystone, or, or anywhere down the road, um, you're going to be able to kind of go, oh, I remember doing this, and comes back this, I don't want to say muscle memory, but this notion should hopefully come back. So there's my next graph. I had plugged in zero for Y, zero for X, and solved. And for the final question on this worksheet number six, we're going to once again do everything we've been doing before. X minus four times zero equals eight. That's all gone. So X is simply equal to eight. I always like to write my points afterwards so that I remember to graph and I know how to graph so I don't flip these and do it by accident. Okay, I think this is the number one thing I'm worried about as you guys are working on this is making sure that if there was a negative right there, that negative does not disappear when you do zero minus four Y. So the zero goes away, but not that negative sign. It's still a negative four Y. So therefore, you're going to divide by that negative four. So Y is going to be equal to negative two. All right. And so for our final point here today. We are going to have to go off the graph a little bit because this is 6, so 7, 8, and then negative 2. And here is our line. And just before we finish this video, as a little bit of an extension, I just want to show you that any of these equations, if you really wanted to graph it in slope-intercept form, um, you're going to get the exact same graph. So let's just take, like, number 1, for example. If I said to you, said to you instead put it in slope-intercept form, and then graph it. Watch what happens here. So we learned this in the last section. We're going to subtract the 3x from both sides. So we're going to have negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. We're trying to write this in slope-intercept form, remember? So y equals negative 3 divided by negative 2 is 3 over 2x. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So if I now take a look at this, right? Here's my y-intercept is negative 3. There it is. And then my slope here was up 3 over 2. So if I go on 2, 3, and I go 1, 2, look at that. I get the exact same two points. I get the exact same two points. And even if you don't get the exact same two points, you're gonna, when you graph it, you're going to get the exact same line when you put it all together here. So this is just to show you that this is a different method. Some people might like this method better, okay? And so after this worksheet, you're going to kind of get the choice. Like on a test or on a keystone or whatever it might be, you're going to be asked, graph this, and it's open or it's standard form. You can go with the method on the left-hand side of the screen here or the method on the right-hand side. It's going to be all your choice. So hopefully this has been helpful to help, uh, help you if you got stuck or to verify that things were correct. Thanks for watching and good luck.